Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I converted from Islam to Christianity two years ago. Hello Miss Amanda and congratulations. You've done a good job finding the truth, but you've done a horrible job trying to justify. And I'm going to respond by looking at the Quran and looking at the Islamic traditions um, to, to, to prove this point. Okay, we can read in, in the Quran that um, Muhammad was told that to consult the Injil and, and the Torah. Before I start, we need to make some points clear. You're using verses from Quran and quotes from the Islamic tradition to justify your reversion. As a Christian you cannot do that. You don't have the right to use any Islamic quotes to justify or prove your belief. Why? Because... Because they know that Islam is not right in submission to a false god given to you by a false prophet. That Muhammad is not a true prophet and therefore the Quran is not a true book of God. And I'm going to respond by looking at the Quran and looking at the Islamic tradition. That Muhammad is not a true prophet and therefore the Quran is not a true book of God. You cannot be contradicted with yourself. You've got to choose. Either the first statement, which makes me accept your Quranic quotes for argument, and also obligates you to admit that Quran is a divine source, and Muhammad is a true prophet. Because you have no other options. If you believe in a verse from Kar and you cannot reject another, you've got to take it all. You also have to accept any hadith by Muhammad. Either that, or you stick to your second statement, and that automatically cancels all your Islamic proofs about the validity of the Bible, followed by the divinity of Jesus. This way all your talk will be a lie, and your faith will be based on nothing, and I'll end this video and go home now. The Arabic proverb says, follow the liar till the door of his house. So to be fair, I'll follow you in both statements. But I'll leave this for later, and start with this one. When you, when you ask them why don't you read uh, the Injil, and why don't you read the Torah? The Torah and the Injil are both in the Bible, but who said we don't read the Bible? See? The first point you started with, was false. And I'll show you later what happens when a Muslim reads the Bible. Now, there's a word that you repeat too much. The Injil, the Injil, the Injil, the Injil. Where is the Injil? Injil comes from the Greek, Evangelium, meaning glad tidings. Gospel comes from God's tale, meaning good news. Which means also glad tidings. So we have no problem that the Injil mentioned in the Quran is the one Jesus had. If we proceed we'll face many problems. This is the Bible. Bible comes from Greek Biblios, meaning simply book. So this is just a book. But Quran calls you people of the book, and says that Jesus was given the book. So, it's alright. Let's look into that book. Here goes the first real problem. Which book should I look into? Because these are all different versions. And these are only the English ones, because there's the same mess in every language. Will the real Holy Bible please stand up? When you open a Bible you find, translated from the original languages, Greek, Latin and Hebrew. Quran says, we sent not an apostle except in the language of his people. Jesus' language was Aramaic. And this is the second real problem. Where is the Aramaic book? It simply does not exist. The Greek and Latin were written by the Greeks and the Romans and they were both pagans. The Hebrew was written by the Israelites and they were Jews. You want me to trust a book written by Jews and pagans? Okay, I'll try to trust it. The Christians are following Jesus. But this book Christians have includes revelations to Moses, David, Solomon and other prophets. Okay, I see, it still includes the Gospel. And here's the third real problem. The Quran says, Angel, not Anagil. The Gospel, not the Gospels. How are you supposed to know which Gospel it is, from between all these? Will the real Gospel please stand up? 
most uh, conclusive evidence. There's no way that you can you can you can doubt or you can try to uh, argue against this. Oh, really? What is it? What John the Apostle set down for them when he wrote the gospel for them from the testament of Jesus. You found the hadith? And according to your own understanding, you concluded that Muhammad is telling us that it's the Gospel of John. There's no way that you can doubt. You have much self-confidence than you should have. Muhammad is talking about John being a writer for the revelation of Jesus. He did not say it has been preserved, did he? How do you know that this Gospel is original? Do you know the Gospel of John? It's in here. Okay, let's look into the Gospel of John. Okay, okay, this is getting ridiculous. I'll suppose that these chunks are one book. How do you know that this gospel is original? Uh, why would it say in the hadith that um, Khadija's uncle was reading the Injil? The events of this other hadith are in the very first moments of Islam. There were no verses of Quran at that time that say whether the Injil was corrupted or preserved. Look at the sirah, look at the hadith. We know the sirah more than you. Because if you know anything about Sira, you would have known that the Hadith is about the first moments of Islam. Here it's saying very clearly in the Quran that the Injil and the Torah... Clearly in the Quran? You quoted 7, 157 and 289 and they both say... Are with them. And according to you, with them means preserved? It doesn't, because it can be corrupted, and still with them. And Muhammad in the Hadith says... Do not believe the people of the book, nor disbelieve them, but say, we believe in Allah and whatever is revealed to us, and whatever is revealed to you. So we do believe in what is revealed to Moses and Jesus, but can't believe the books nor disbelieve them, because they're corrupted, but not totally corrupted, that's why 289 says, confirming. And in another hadith Muhammad says, the children of Israel had written a book, and they followed it and forsaken the Torah. I think it's clear, and I am quoting to you from Quran and Hadith because I am supposing that you should accept them, because you quoted from them as well. Note that 7157 is talking about Muhammad being mentioned in those books, so when you say the books are original, you say that Muhammad is a true prophet. Read the Quran again. I, I read it all the time, I read the, I read, I read the Quran all the time. What is this? Tell me it's not a translation. I assume you're not that good at Arabic, so I'll accept the translation. I read the, I read, I read the Quran all the time. Then you must have come across these verses. 279. The books are man-written. 378. People of the book tell lies and hide the truth. 4157. Christ was not crucified. 517. Christ is not Lord. 572, Christ said you should worship God. 573, God is one, not a trinity. 575, Son of Mary was just a human and a messenger. 516, 117, Christ will reject you on the judgment day. Now what? You reject all these verses, you reject your verses too. If you accept, you accept all, and that will not be a contradiction between your verses and my verses. Simply because the verse that you used does not say what you claimed it does. The Islamic teachings clearly states that Allah is the one and only God and Jesus is his messenger. However, you went further to prove that Jesus is God also using so-called Islamic proofs. And today I'm going to be giving more evidence that Jesus Christ is God, but I'm going to be focusing more on on Islamic proofs. It's up to you now what you're going to do. Um, are you going to turn around and say, oh, we don't believe that, you see, because uh, Allah lets the scriptures get corrupted? I told you, you have too much self-confidence than you should have, as a two years and a half Christian, that converted from no religion. Yes, no religion. Don't say you were a Muslim, you were not. And I'll get back to this point later. It's up to you now what you're going to do. Sounds like a challenge. And I accepted it. Want to know what I'm gonna do?
Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Jesus, oh how I love you, how I love you, Jesus. Jesus. He is not a god.